Rise and shine, nerds. You're tuned in to the Back Row Morning Show, proudly a part of the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network. I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Mo. We're caffeine-fueled and ready to talk your ears off. This week on the show, we're going to take a look at the DLC model and how it's seeping its way into all areas of our lives. So we're going to move into our main topic of the week, uh, and we're going to start off with a kickoff discussion in our Discord. So if uh, you're watching on Twitch right now and you would like to discuss uh, with us your subscription habits, we would love for you to jump on in, uh, and uh, we'll get started with that in just a hot minute. Hot minute, because it is hot in here still. It's still very hot in our studio. It's extremely hot. Uh, so last week, let me do some setup here while people are jumping in. Last week, uh, some media outlets noticed that BMW was selling an $18 a month subscription to heated seats in a number of countries, including South Korea. The German automaker had previously tried and failed to get customers to pay $80 a month for access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, features that are otherwise free in other companies' vehicles. But even after BMW reversed its decision to force people to pay for something that used to be free, it was clear that it wouldn't stop there. But if you think about it, we all pay for a lot of subscriptions these days that didn't exist a decade or two ago. So let's jump in our chats. Bye. Oh. Hi. Hello. I love you, bye. Hello. 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 How are you guys? Good. How are you? <laughs> You're doing good. We're whispering. Everyone's whispering. Uh, we're doing all right. So we've got in our chat today, we got Oriel Jedi, Brian. Good to see you, my friend. And then we have KY hey, Redhead, you. otherwise known as Hillary, with one L. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. So our question today is how much of your life is made up of subscriptions? And really, really think about just how many there are uh, in your life. Because I had to stop and think about this question for a long time uh, before I realized just how many I had. Like current life or like of our whole lives? Uh, pretty much current life, like right now. So not like Columbia Record Club. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, baby. <laughs> Just not ready Going. for that kind of commitment. <laughs> Going old school there. <laughs> 20 CDs for a penny, but then I have to buy 20 more at full price over the next year. I mean. <laughs> You'll send the police there. after me. That, that was a shameful <laughs> period in my life. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, they moved. I don't know who this person is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got now? Wow. So, let's see here. Right now, I have Twitch. I've got... Well, how many channels am I subscribed to on Twitch? <laughs> um, oh, well, yeah. Twitch is LTN something that I forgot air, about, too. Obviously. <laughs> LTN. Obviously. Silver Soul, and I think Frostbite right now. I mm. think I'm only. I think I'm down to four. <laughs> At one point, I was up to like seven. Oh yeah, so. it's it's real easy to just get buried in Twitch subscriptions. Yeah, <laughs> and then I've got Netflix and um. Paramount Plus. I also have a bunch. I mean, I've got a bunch of the streaming services because they're bundled together with cell phone deal that I had. So uh -huh. those, like Disney Plus and Hulu, I got the an ESPN Plus. I got all that with my cell phone deal. So I don't have to pay for those right now. <laughs> yeah, those, those, I, those cell yeah. phones would be great. We got Discovery <laughs> Plus that way and Disney. Yeah. Plus that way. As long as yeah. you remember to cancel them when right. it. <laughs> right. And then for, I don't have this currently. I just dropped this service, but it was one of those closed like subscription services ah. that was made for big and tall men. Oh, 
Wow. So was it the Winston it box? Specifically the Winston box, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. That's been tempting That's cool. to me. I did that for a little bit. I would do that every couple of months because it was still kind of, I mean, $75 every three months. But uh, so they have them like you could do every month. But so I'm like, I'm not paying $75 a month <laughs> for all this stuff. <laughs> But then I had some issues with them recently, so I kind of dropped that because I wasn't happy with their customer service with the responses I was getting or mm. non-responses I was getting. <laughs> but I think that's about it for... Oh, and also I have Spotify. Spotify, right. Amazon. Mm -hmm. Prime. <laughs> Jeez, you're Tell right. Me, you just that, keep picking of them. Really <laughs> They just start creeping up on you. Do you have any like cell phone things that you're subscribed to? Cell phone apps, games, anything like no, that? No, I don't have any monthly ones like that. I only, I actually only have one game on my phone. What? I download games, yeah. never play them, forget I have them. I've got like seventy games on my phone. I, play, I had a I bunch play on none there, and I, I got rid of them. So I'm like, I'm not playing, these, so I'll just quit them. <laughs> All right. Well, you can keep thinking and let us know if you think of some more. But KY, what about yeah. you? Shoo. Oh, yeah. A lot of overlap. So Amazon and Disney Plus and Netflix. And uh, we do um, Paramount. Wow. Uh, two Paramount. For Star Trek. Yeah. And we do Peacock because, well, we did for a time. I don't know if we still do, but for the Psych movie when it came out, the latest Psych movie. Um, we have the one that has HGTV, but I haven't used it in a long time. The Discovery, I think it's the whole Discovery, Discovery Plus, yeah, Plus bundle. And so Charlie uses that for like the we dig for gold in the middle of the ocean kind of people. Yeah. And I know I'm conflating things. I um, love the Food Network. I I I subscribe old school to HGTV magazine because I'm a, a visual magazine? person and I like. I like having the actual physical magazine. I don't do well with like ebooks and e magazines. Um, but it's 40s? interesting. Go ahead. Rude. So, are you Matt? from the 40s? Do you have a magazine? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's funny because I used to be subscribed to People magazine, like I was for years and years and years. And then I realized two things. One, I felt obligated to read the whole thing. And. <laughs> And because like I grew up poor and so it was like if it's on your plate you eat it all <laughs> and I had to like I still have to work to let go of that That's and an interesting... so I, I struggled to not yeah. read the whole magazine to make it worth it but I found myself getting really stressed out because of some of the content and a lot of it I don't care about like I'm not a celebrity follow person like that's just <laughs> not one of my hobbies and so I was like I don't actually need to be subscribed to this anymore and so I dropped that subscription and I felt like a little guilty but also like free and so that was a very weird feeling for me um i subscribed to a monthly thing for classical home educators to access content created by other parents for our particular homeschool program classical mm -hmm. conversations and so that's a monthly thing um and oh we subscribed to a newspaper epic times that physical newspaper that comes to our house which i use for all of my watercoloring needs um <laughs> and, and paper mache and stuff like that so i have an actual newspaper that i use for that um and let's see what else uh i feel like i'm forgetting something obvious i don't play games on my phone i don't keep games on my phone um because i i do bad enough with apps um i have an annual subscription to an app that I use for my business and my family has a Nintendo online yeah. account. Nintendo Is that online. what it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so I forgot my, about my, that one. <laughs> but it's Charlie's. It's my husband's. Like we don't have the family account much to my children's chagrin. We have, he, he has it. Yeah, I ain't paying and for so, the family one either. <laughs> I guess that counts as our household. <laughs> yes, Um counts. Yeah, uh, we don't get DVDs in the mail anymore, so <laughs> we'll cut that. But you still can. Uh, <laughs> Netflix still sends them out if you want them, which is nuts. 
Uh, we have a public library for that. Um, and our <laughs> library just went fine free, so I'm totally stoked about that, as are all the homeschoolers in our community. Nice. Um, <laughs> Mo understands. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like there's something clearly that I'm forgetting. I wish I had a massage subscription, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, that Same. would be amazing, wouldn't it? Like, yeah. once a month. Mm-hmm. Massage. Absolutely. I should have a chiropractor subscription. I go every 10 days, so <laughs> I'm pretty much... They keep a table open for me. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't think of anything else that I have a subscription to. What am I missing? I feel like there's something clearly that <laughs> You're going to spring on us and be like, ah, you also have this other thing. Well, I just remembered a couple more that I... Uh, oh, uh, go for it. When you when you mentioned games on your phone, I was like, oh, duh, I subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. That's how I have most <laughs> of my games right now. And also the Nintendo Online. And then as I'm watching the O's game as well, there was a commercial for HBO Max. And I have that as well. Oh goodness, you have all the uh, streaming services, almost. Yeah, some my of gracious. Our family, some of them are family stuff that we sure. kind of all share. Because, <laughs> oh, but don't tell them. Netflix is out for blood <laughs> right now about that. Yeah. <laughs> Oriel, but, who are we yeah, playing the, tonight? The the Rays. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's probably not accurate on the date that this is airing. Well, no. We'll no, because but... on the date that this is airing, it'll be the All Star break. So, uh, so uh... you can you can splice that in later. It's the All Star break. <laughs> so Perfect. I have several video streaming services as well. We have Hulu, Disney, Peacock. Uh, that might be all we have right now. Uh, Amazon Music. We have the Amazon Kids subscription thing for our boys so they can do their Kindles and have stories, play through the Echo and things. Uh, I subscribe to Canva, which is uh, the designing app, the online designing app that's fantastic. Uh, Of course, like you mentioned, Twitch subs and things. Used to do a lot of like nerd crates, had that, had uh, the Marvel and the DC Comics. Funko crates when they had those coming out. Oh, wow. Um, I remember those. Yeah, those were fun. I think they're still doing the Marvel one on Amazon now, but it's not as exciting as it used to be. Yeah, I, I did the loot crate for a little bit. Loot crate? I did loot but... crate until they started stinking, man. Yeah. That one, Same. Once I, once I got one that was like a t shirt that was three sizes too small, a protein shake, and like 50 download codes for crappy mobile right. games, I'm like, okay. Y'all aren't even trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I forgot I also have a GameStop Pro membership. So <laughs> that's a yearly all. subscription. Uh, did that, does that still come with Electronic Gaming Monthly, or did that magazine fold? No, nope, that still comes with that. You can get it either physical <laughs> or uh, online. <laughs> yeah, I, had I get that, it online. I had that for one year. Yeah, I remember that. Um, what magazines did you subscribe to when you were a kid, real quick? Not when you were a kid, but when you were younger. Oh. I guess oh, highlights. highlights um ranger rick <laughs> oh, I, I was part of the power rangers fan club heck the monthly yes. fan club of power heck rangers yes. when i was a kid heck yes boy heck yes <laughs> boy so good big oh, in here like- good big in here says nintendo power i was big into yeah. Nintendo Hell power. yeah Ooh, did you say the h word right there <laughs> It just sounded she like said, you went H, huh. yeah. Yeah. I said, ooh, yeah. Huh. At the end yeah. of that word, ooh, yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the Nickelodeon magazine. Remember the Nickelodeon magazine? Nickelodeon magazine. Yeah, yes. that was dope, too. And then also uh, Zoo Books. Oh, wow. Zoo Books. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Totally forgot about Zoo Books. I got those. My grandma got me a subscription to that. I remember. Do you have magazines, Mo? No. I you didn't do any magazines? No. My parents were... I didn't have a subscription. If I went grocery shopping with my mom and I was lucky enough that day, she felt like I was deserving of a, um, you know, the magazine from the rack right there at the checkout line. Mm-hmm. That was the only time I got magazines. Wow. I mean, magazines are like... 
$20 for a year, or you could buy them $5 a piece at the store. Okay, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> My, on my stepdad's side, my stepdad was the youngest of six kids, and so, and then each one of those kids had several kids of their own. Yeah. So, for Christmas, we would all exchange names, and you would give three gift ideas, and every year, every single <laughs> year, my three requests were subscriptions, subscriptions. to something, <laughs> and I never got it. Really? Never. That's such wow. an economical choice. I know. Oh man, what a never bummer. got it. Maybe it's just because was it was because you wouldn't have anything specifically there on Christmas morning. I don't know. Just be like, I've never right, asked. Here's a card that said, I'm "We subscribe you to this magazine." I'm just bitter about it. That's Enjoy it in two weeks when the first issue comes. But I, even to this day, <laughs> at 37 years old, like having a highlight subscription is still something that I really want. Right? Highlights was the bomb. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have a subscription, but I went highlights to the doctor. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they were always at the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were. I'm like, I cannot go in yet, Mom. I haven't found this apple. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished reading Goofus and Gallant. Goofus and Gallant. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. Uh, Mo, we didn't really ask you yet. I How much of your life is made up of subscriptions? Pretty much all of it, <laughs> and it is kind of. Sad and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm listening to everybody list off theirs and like, yep, mm -hmm, that one, yeah, that one, uh -huh, and that one. Oh, and I've got this one that you didn't even name. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything. I you mentioned before on the show something about a car wash subscription. Yes. Yep, I uh -huh. have one of those too. Yep. Car, car nice. wash. So this, this, these last two months, June and July, this place at our town was doing a deal where you could get a month each month for ten dollars which that's how much a basic wash costs so you're like okay oh, wow. sure mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. once you have that unlimited pass you go all the time you do I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> you roll up to that thing it doesn't even ask you for money it's just all boop uh -huh. welcome back sir yeah and i'm like yeah <laughs> And that includes the vacuums and, yeah. you know, so, yeah, you, it, to me, the car wash subscription is totally worth it. Um, Spotify, Sirius XM, um, those are just in my car. Let's see. <laughs> then we have all of the streaming things, which drives me bananas. Um, to include DirecTV. What? Uh, but that's because nowhere will stream no. football. No. So we have to have well, DirecTV for football they're season. They're talking about um, the NFL Red Zone or whatever. Direct or The Sunday ticket is actually going to not be on DirecTV after this yeah. coming year. It'll be on a regular streaming service. Yeah. It's, it's going like to happen. Like Amazon or it's something It's got to happen. I mean, as long happen. as it's already on a sh one of, I mean, we have all of the streaming services, so it doesn't even matter, but as long <laughs> <Yeah>. as, it, <laughs> and they play live, like that's the big thing. We can watch a limited number of uh, games, but not live. I'm trying to you know yeah. calculate I mean? in my head how don't, much money don't, you are don't, spending on TV alone. Don't, and <laughs> we don't even watch that much TV. That's the thing. But we just have everything available if we want to. If that is luxury. Drives me crazy. <laughs> I mean, we, the only thing I really watch on cable TV anymore is the Orioles right now. Yeah. So that's legitimately the only reason that we have Direct TV is for sports. That's it. That is Man. all. All right. Well, we've got to end this segment. But KY Oriole, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Sure. <laughs> and y'all have a fantastic rest of your day. Love y'all. You too. Love Bye. you guys. Love you too. <laughs> oh, man. Uh huh. <sighs> this week we are talking about our DLC life. How much of our life is made up of paid extra, be extras, be they subscription services for things that uh, didn't used to be subscriptions or extras that we have to pay for that used to come standard freely? Uh, when we hear the phrase DLC, we initially think of video games because that is where the term originated. DLC is downloadable content, and it's a huge part of modern video games. But it's not just modern video games. It's been going on for a while, uh, but it started in uh, sort of understandable ways. DLC is an official download released by the proprietary developer studio, 
which provides additional content to a base game under the same title. So, one of the first notable DLC features came through a real-time strategy game, Total Annihilation. It was created by Cave Dog Entertainment, which would release new units every month on personal computers way back in 1997. But these updates were free after you bought the game. It's just like, here's the initial game, and we're going to keep coming out with new stages, new updates every month. That mm -hmm. was like a feature of what you were buying. Some of the most notable early expansion packs, which you could consider large-scale DLC overhauls, would include uh, Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness, released in 96. Uh, the expansion Warcraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal, released shortly thereafter. These early expansions typically continued the previous version's plot while providing users with new units, characters, or items, much in the same way they do today. Blizzard went to continue this practice multiple times with their Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and Diablo franchises. In 1991, there was an interesting arcade quasi-DLC in the game Double Dragon 3 The Rosetta Stone. It had an item shop to buy things for your character, which required real money. So you could go into the shop before you played the game and like get, you know, special armor or whatever, and you just had to put in more quarters in order to get that for your character. Uh, you paid essentially, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you put the right number of quarters in by the thing for your character as one time purchase. The first time I remember there being paid DLC uh, that wasn't an expansion pack was on Xbox. Uh, it was the only Xbox console I've ever owned. Uh, my friends in college played Halo uh, with me. Then Halo 2 came out and it was missing a couple of the best maps for the multiplayer aspect from the first game. So they released the ability to open those maps and you paid for essentially a code to unlock the maps on the disc. But that told me that they were already on the disc and I already owned the disc. So why was I having to pay more to play the whole disc? But maybe the most direct ancestor to the current DLC movement in games isn't actually a console or a PC game at all. It barely counts as a mobile game. It was the Facebook game Farmville. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Y'all remember Farmville? The game was simultaneously boring and addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Gameplay consisted of laborious mechanical management tasks and demanded that the player constantly return to the game at specific times to harvest crops in order to get virtual currency so you could plant more crops and start the clock over again. Farmville advertised constantly within the growing social platform that birthed it, Facebook. Uh, and Facebook even reported that at the height of Farmville's popularity, the game accounted for a staggering 12% of Facebook's total revenue. And this was in 2011. It provided regular updates, required constant participation, and grew through a constant social insistence. You remember back before you could like mute things, before you could mute Farmville notifications? You would open up your feed and it would be oh, yeah. half Farmville things. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Shortly thereafter, we saw the rise of addictive, repetitive games that offered to help you get ahead faster by paying real money in small increments called microtransactions. Did you play Farmville, Mo? I did not. No? I did not play Farmville. I have a very good friend. Actually, you met this very good friend of mine, Rebecca, mm. the one who was insistent on giving you a hug. Right. Um, I tried to hide from. Uh huh. She yes. Let me. She was addicted <laughs> to Farm Bill, and that—that's one of the very first conversations that we had. Was where she was like just beside herself, livid with the fact that she was addicted <laughs> to this ridiculous game, and she didn't know how to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you play any games? Have you, or do you now play any games like Candy Crush or Clash Royale or things of that nature I used, that do allow you to pay extra money to get ahead? I used to play Candy Crush all the time. Yeah. Love Candy Crush. Did you ever pay any money? Not on Candy Crush. Not a, Okay. What did you pay money on then? I've already implying, talked about it. What? That design game that I was stupidly addicted to remind me like two years ago it was the home design game oh right and why did you have to pay money for it 
to get specific furniture and design oh. features because you get ranked your room gets voted and ranked against <laughs> other people in the game who are designing the same room wow and if you want to get ranked as the better designer you have to have the better furniture how much money do you think you paid i mean honestly not that much not more than a hundred dollars that's a lot Mo. <laughs> in two years time in two years you time a hundred dollars into a mobile game i'm not super happy about it but there's a lot of people that pay way more that is not a justification <laughs> And it was over two years. I understand. It's not like it was over a couple days. Golly. I, when you said not a lot, I expected you to say 20 bucks or less. <laughs> $100. Thank you, KY. Thank you. Oh, man. KY that's says, funny. have y'all not paid $100 in two years for online video game stuff? Not for the same game. Nope. It doesn't have to be the same it game. It does. That's specifically what I'm Why? Hold at. Why? Because I find one game that I actually enjoy. <laughs> and so I'm going to that invest. Dropped, and I am using the, uh, of, that word loosely. Right. I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> invest money in one game. As opposed to five games? <laughs> yeah. No. Yes. Mm -mm. No. Oh, man. Ay, ay, ay. So I played, oh, what was it called? There's been a thousand versions of it, but it's one of those brick games where they come down. It's all the multiple like colors. Like Tetris? No, not really. That's what it sounds like. A brick Can game I? with multiple Look, colors? No, I, I'm going to hate on your hot. game. Can you at least let me explain <laughs> it before you get there? <laughs> Here we go. And it's like the game that has... The, the, the goal is to clear all the blocks, but they're all... You have to like shoot rockets and blow up bombs and all this kind of stuff to get them done there. But they're... It's it's Tetris esque, but it's not Tetris because you're not dropping shapes to try and make things. You're trying to get rid of a thing that's already there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I paid maybe five dollars uh, on that game that I played for about not two years. I paid it for like three months. Then what are you what are you buying if you pay, if you paid you're buying maybe five dollars? No, I'm just I'm saying I bought. I bought like for 99 cents, you could buy like a three pack of these extra tools you could use because it'd be like a stage I just could not beat. And you're not invested Funny. in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I was invested, but it's also just like Candy Crush, one of those games that doesn't end. There's 50,000 levels. It's mm -hmm. never going to end. Mm -hmm. So I eventually had to come to the conclusion of I'm never going to beat this game. Yeah. Why would I keep playing and keep spending money into it? And I can't beat it. And so luckily I got to that point. But a lot of people don't, especially like with Candy Crush. Candy Crush is the big thing that's always kind of lampooned. I think there was a whole episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine about that too, how it got addictive and even the captain eventually got addicted to crazy cupcakes. That's what they called it in the show. <laughs> and it's like you, you get so addicted to that little dopamine hit when you defeat a level that you can't put it down, even if it's going to cost you money to get to the next world or something like that. And that's the kind of stuff that this DLC culture uh, relies on. And that grew out of these micro transaction, transaction casual games like Farmville and, and uh, Candy Crush and the things like that, and has slowly taken over console games and PC games. And uh, that's kind of the biggest complaint of console and PC games right now. Most of which are online, downloaded directly to your device. Uh, it's this circle of siphoning. Mm -hmm. So you pre-order, then you got the release of the game, you got the in-game currency, you got the microtransactions, you got the paid DLC, and then you get the season pass, which is essentially a subscription to further updates. Uh, when I was a kid, you bought the game, that was that. Mm -hmm. Now games come incomplete and you pay extra to fill it out. Mm -hmm. In some cases, this can keep the game alive. For instance, Grand Theft Auto V. That came out in 2013. It's still a popular game because 
every few years, it has had a new DLC download with like big updates. And so it keeps it popular, keeps it going. Uh, but in far too many cases, it feels like we're being ripped off. One of the biggest examples in recent memory is the game Fallout 4 that basically didn't come with an ending. You could play the game and beat the whole game that you bought and you wouldn't be rewarded with an ending, not even a cheesy slideshow of everything that you've done or anything like that, nothing. Until you bought the Nuka World DLC, which brought an ending to the game. It's like you had to buy the final level in order to get the satisfaction of winning. Isn't that silly? <laughs> it is. I'm pretty sure that Chris had Fallout 4. Yeah. I'm fairly certain. Um, one that's just come out in the last few months that has me confused is... Oh, it's, it's like a big insane. How about Ubisoft saying that they are turning off some DLC people have for some games? Yeah, that's the other thing. Eventually, they'll uh, just... If they if, if if they need to get rid of that resource, they will. And you've already paid for it, but they can take it away now because technically you still don't own it. Uh, Oriel Genesis wow. says, Grand Theft Auto V has been released on three generations of systems. That's absolutely true. That's how it's st <laughs> stayed popular. But the WWE 2K22 has just come out a couple months ago. And when I was a kid, all the best wrestling games were jam-packed with every character you could want to play as with all their best ring gear, costumes, everything like that. WWE 2K22 just came out for 70 bucks. It's already a hefty price for a game. But then they kept a lot of the fan favorite wrestlers out. So if you want all your favorites, you have to buy the DLC character packs that come with five or so wrestlers, probably two of which you really want. So you want to play as Cactus Jack or Vader? Cool, we got you. But you'll also be paying for Boogeyman, everyone's absolute least favorite pick, uh, and two unknown NXT wrestlers that you don't care about at all. That'll be an extra 10 bucks. You want Ronda Rousey? Awesome. You're also going to pay for Doink the Clown. You want Rob Van Dam? Cool. You're also going to be buying Machine Gun Kelly and Logan Paul. Give me that $10. In the end, you're paying 120 bucks to have the option to play every character. So at this point, you're better off paying 100 bucks to get the deluxe edition because that comes with all the DLC packs and a special Rey Mysterio costume. Oh, but wait, what if you wanna play as the NWO too? They're one of the most iconic stables of all time. Well, then you need to get the NWO for life edition that comes with everything the deluxe edition comes with, plus five NWO characters to play as. But now you're back up to $120. But hold on. What about arguably the most imposing WWE wrestler of all time, The Undertaker? Oh, he's already in the game. Okay, but what about all of his different costumes? Because he's been around for 40 some odd years. I don't know. No. If you want to play as Biker Taker, Ministry Taker, or Mass Taker, you have to pre-order the NWO 4 Live version. So now you need to pay $120 and then wait a few months to get any benefit long before any reviews have come out to tell you if this game is the bug-filled dumpster fire the WWE 2K20 was. And you know. you're giving me a hard time for paying $100 <laughs> over two years for dining room tables, couches, and beds? I didn't buy this, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> uh, to WWE 2K20 2K20 was so bad that they skipped an entire year of making the game to try and retool everything. That's something that they've never done. You just dropped six Jacksons on a game that you might hate. Bottom line is DLC is only a good thing when it's meant to extend the life of a game that has run its course and needs a transfusion. It's a bad thing when it's just used as a way to sell an incomplete game and then essentially hold the rest of the game hostage. And unfortunately, this kind of mentality is seeping into the rest of our lives, too. <sighs> <laughs> this week we're talking about our DLC life, how much of our life is made up of paid extras, be they subscription services for things that didn't used to be subscriptions, or extras that we have to pay for that used to come standard freely. So earlier this week, we talked about the BMW seat warmer subscription service in a few foreign countries and discussed the role of subscriptions in our lives. As soon as I got my first job and had some disposable income, I started buying DVDs. Hmm. Uh, my wife and I kept buying DVDs of movies and TV shows for years. We had a huge collection. And then I thought, well, 
we want to make sure that we have these forever. So in 2015, I started the long task of ripping every single DVD, every single episode, every single movie onto a two terabyte hard drive. It took every free moment of my life for three months. Fast forward five years and we barely use it anymore because even then I had no idea that DVDs wouldn't be a thing so quickly and that the most convenient thing would be paying for several streaming services all at once. Yeah. CDs are a thing of the past because of all the music service streaming, uh, streaming services rather. In fact, my mother asked me to burn her a CD with some of my music on it. Uh, the other day, and I realized I don't have a single computer at my house or work uh -huh. that has a disk drive. Yeah, which I remember in high school getting we uh, our 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 um, newspaper department got new iMacs, and none of them had floppy disk drives. Uh huh. And we're like, what do what we do? We do? do? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I remember that transition and this one just came in so subtly. Without Right. Yeah. Like it, it's like there was no warning. It's like we're just gonna take them away and we didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um so as a kid, I can remember only two things that were subscriptions really, and that was magazines and newspapers. Do you remember any other kind of subscription thing from back when we were kids? I'm I mean, KY talked about it, Columbia. Columbia, okay, yeah, those weird music things. And they also had like the Disney movie club. Yeah. That was kind of in that mm -hmm. same vein. But even then even then, those I don't really consider subscriptions because those were kind of like they're kind of like ripoffs. I mean they were, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> they were you're telling like me scams. that a, that there are no subscriptions that are kind of like scams, kind of uh, like ripoffs. I mean that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, most things are becoming subscriptions of some kind today, uh, from video games to software of many kinds, things like Dropbox uh, to rent a, a piece of the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> There's also meal plan subscriptions, mm -hmm. free shipping subscriptions, Amazon Prime, water bottle subscriptions, counseling services. What well, big water bottle things? Yeah, no. Okay. I just, you said, um, I don't remember what you said that made me think <laughs> about it, but like maybe it was meal plan, but like, Weight Watchers, that would have been a subscription when we were kids because you have to pay the monthly. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess I classify that more as a membership, but it's still the same principle. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, counseling services, relaxation apps, debt watch services, dry cleaning subscriptions, audiobook subscriptions, Apple Care. Eyeglass frame subscriptions, dog toys, baby toys, nerd toys, gym memberships, home security, dating apps, online newspapers, virus software, VPNs, car wash memberships, <laughs> Uber memberships, DoorDash subscriptions, the list goes on and on, all with tiny fees, most like $10 a month or so, but with so many things, they start adding up so fast. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I can, don't. You can even subscribe to an app that's only purpose is to track your subscriptions so you don't forget what you're subscribing to. Is it too much, Mo? Yes. <laughs> it is. It is too much. And the way that they get you is by keeping that low price point mm -hmm. and making you think, oh, I can pay for that. That's just $10 a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you think that 20 times... <laughs> And that's two hundred dollars every month gone. Absolutely, and they the other way that it gets us is the convenience. The convenience is a big draw for most of these things. Yeah, like we were talking about the other day with the car wash thing. Mm -hmm. The convenience of not having to roll down my window and put in my car to deal with the whole little touch screen system, to where I can just roll up, it reads my thing, goes boop, welcome. <laughs> That's enough to make me want to pay $20 a month for that subscription. <laughs> and I, don't, I mean, I, that's, that's obviously just all about laziness on my part. But like that convenience stuff can really get you. Uh, the convenience of that's why a lot of like, you know, we've talked about the streaming services before. And like my my plan is you get the two that you really love that you watch all the time. And then you have a rotating third one. Mm -hmm. You, you know, get, get the one that you, you know, get, get, get Paramount once, 
a whole season of Star Trek has come out or whatever that you want to watch. Get it for one month. Binge watch that whole season. Cancel it for the next month. Yeah. Listen, we've had Paramount since it came out. <laughs> and I think we successfully were able to log into it for one month. And ever since then, we've not been able you to actually log into our account. But you're still paying for it. But we're still paying for it. <laughs> and that's like that's the thing. That is a great plan. Right. And it will work flawlessly as long as you remember to cancel your subscriptions. And that's my big thing is the, that. Here's the key. I got a key. Make it a part of the sign up process. As soon as you signed up, cancel it. You still got it for that whole month because you paid for that month. Cancel it immediately. And it'll end after that month. Why have I never thought of that? <laughs> it's, it's the only thing that has saved me from forgetting about it. <laughs> Well then. Write it down. Write it down, everybody. That's a life hack. That is a life hack. That is 100% a life hack. Wow. So let's talk about the BMW thing again. Um, we'll go into a little bit more detail. This one floors me. Companies honestly. like yeah, companies like BMW just really can't give up the dream of turning everyday basic features into subscription services. Service fees that they can consistently and mysteriously nudge ever upward. In several countries, that has taken the form of charging customers upwards of $18 a month just to enjoy heated seats that they technically already own. Korean owners aren't forced to pay the monthly uh, you know, price for the heated seats or any of BMW's other available options, but monthly payments can be made to try those out. Otherwise, they'll just live without them. Heated seats, for instance, cost roughly $18 a month, but you can also pay for a year subscription at $176, a three-year subscription for $283. You can just buy the heated seats permanently for $406. Mind you, they're already in the car. The heated seat subscription option is part of the company's connected drive program. It's already a reality in Korea, the UK, New Zealand, Germany, and South Africa. It hasn't come to the US yet, but it's fairly obvious that it's likely to eventually. Mm -hmm. In this case, the technological capacity for heated seats already exists in the car. The manufacturer has already factored these costs into the base price, and they're effectively charging you a premium simply to turn on the technology that already exists and frankly, you've already paid for. It truly is only a matter of time before this comes to America. And what happens when you try to get like a, you know, a friend or a, you know, a independent, you know, mechanic to work around that system and let you turn it on? Well, newer cars are coming out with the option for the company to brick your car. What? Much like cell phone companies can brick your phone if you try to hack into it. The future has already begun. It's called the subscription economy. We see the rise of things like Amazon Markets, where, you, where you're tied into the system already. So you simply walk in, pick up what you want, and walk out. You never use cash or even take out a card. In fact, paying it all is on the way out. Now you can tap almost everywhere. You can use your phone or smartwatch to tap, and you can set up to pay via an app where you simply scan a QR code and your card is charged. We're closer than ever to a cashless society, at least when it comes to physical cash. I mean, are you ready for that? No. Are you ready for a cashless society? Because it's mm -mm. our lifetime, though. <laughs> Does it have to be? <laughs> I mean, if enough of us get together and dig our heels in, like, we can put a stop to it. Can we? I, I really know. think we can. I don't know. I don't believe in society anymore. Well, After 2020, I don't believe in society. <laughs> I believe in nerds. We can all get together. And... I feel like a lot of nerds are like, this is cool technology. <laughs> I mean, I even think this is kind of cool, even though it's also kind of scary. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, how often really do you have cash on you anymore? Like physical cash. Rarely. Rarely, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I have usually up to $10 in ones, and that's just so I can use the water fill-up thing that's across the street from the church that doesn't have fair. a card swipe. That's fair. <laughs> but I could go to Albertsons or Walmart and use the card swipe to fill it up. Okay, but this gives me a little bit of hope, because right now, I have two teenagers 
who have paying jobs and they prefer to get paid in cash and to have cash in their wallet and on them than to have to use their debit card or anything else electronic. So maybe the generation coming up. The cynical side of me is saying they're wanting it so there's no kind of paper trail of what they're doing with that money. The cynical side of me is saying they want their money so they can spend it how they want so their parents can't like log into their bank account and see what they've been buying. That's the cynical side of me. I I want to believe. At this point, <laughs> neither one of them can independently drive, so we still have to take them wherever they want to go to purchase whatever it is that they want to purchase. So when but Topher always, drops $180 always, at GameStop on Pops. Well, yeah, you can't hide the Pops, can you? No, <laughs> you can't. Topher gets his new SpongeBob Pop. He can't just hide it in his pants. Those things are in giant boxes. By the way, I went to GameStop mm -hmm. to buy a pop. This is totally off topic. To buy a pop to put on screen here yeah. for my backdrop mm -hmm. here on Twitch, uh, which I wound up getting a puffy shirt Jerry Seinfeld, which I didn't really want to buy. I was going to say, <laughs> of all of the pops? It was the only one that I didn't have that I didn't hate. I'll get a new one eventually when something comes up that I don't have to put too much effort into. But... They had a Groot Pop, a baby Groot Pop. I am Groot. That is three feet tall. Mm. It is in a box this big. It is so huge. Mm -hmm. And it's $119. I almost spent an entire uh, Twitch payment on this one thing until I realized it's probably not going to be visible in the shot. That's fair. <laughs> I have to put it on a table. It would be my whole background. Like, yeah. uh, but anyway, even Girl Scout troops have to have a stripe, you know, dongle on their phone these days because no one has cash. And that used to be like, you know, I would have cash just to buy Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> that was my excuse to not have to buy Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> don't have any cash on it. Sorry. Sorry, I don't have any cash. No and the first today. time that I said that and they were like, it's okay, we've got it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, great, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so we're, we already are nearly a checklist society. Um, very few people use checks anymore. Uh, we don't even, we haven't bought checks in almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. Y'all have checks? I think that we're like on our last two books, yeah. but we also have not ordered new checkbooks in at least five years yeah. at the very least. Like there used to be, you used to have to order new checks. Like you used to have a subscription for new checks. Yeah. I remember my mom would get a new thing of checks at least every three months. Yeah. And yeah, now it's, uh, <laughs> Oriel Jedi says, I can't remember the last time I wrote a check. <laughs> So I had a really aha moment last night while playing Quiplash with my family. And the question was, the world's most intelligent dog can follow this command. And I wrote, balance a checkbook. And my kids were like, what does that even mean, <laughs> balance a checkbook? And I was like, <laughs> what's a checkbook? Well, Why no, I think that balance? they thought like, yeah, you know, like balance, like. <laughs> on the top of your head? Yeah, like hold it on its nose, balance the check. Why are you going to balance a checkbook? Okay. Poise. <laughs> right? No, never mind. Forget it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So things uh -huh. are rapidly changing, and this is only the start of a massive shift. Mm. Whew. So this week we're talking about our DLC life and how much of our life is made up of paid extras, be they subscription services for things that didn't used to be subscriptions or extras that we have to pay for that used to come standard and freely. And the last thing we want to discuss is the idea that by 2030, we won't own anything. It's seven years. Mm-hmm. I don't think you mean. On November 10th, 2016, Danish MP Ida Aachen published an essay, Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. For the World Economic Forum. 
In this essay, Aachen makes a prediction for the year 2030, writing that in 2030, one doesn't own a house, a car, appliances, or clothes, instead renting everything. The essay also predicts mass surveillance and a society split in two. As of 2022, the essay is no longer available on the World Economic Forum's website. The essay, essay was summarized in the Eight Predictions for the World in 2030 article by the World Economic Forum, published on November 16th of 2016. Uh, and in it, Aachen wrote, I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any, own any appliances or any clothes. She goes on to say that shopping is a distant memory in the city of 2030, whose inhabitants have cracked clean energy and borrow what they need on demand. It sounds utopian, but she, she mentions that her every move is tracked, and outside the city live swaths of discontents, the ultimate vision of a society split in two. Together with the article, the World Economic Forum posted a video uh, of the same title to its website, Facebook, and Twitter, and the first prediction in the video, based on Hawkins' essay, states, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Whatever you want, you'll rent, and it'll be delivered by a drone. The video accumulated over 9,900 reactions and 766,000 views on Facebook in five years. Now, this has gained some attention again this year, uh, to the point where a lot of people thought that this came out this year, uh, though it actually is several years old. But many economists, 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 I don't remember how to pronounce that word, and I think I spelled it wrong. Econo economists? Mm -hmm. Economists! That's how you say it. <laughs> I went to school. Economists believe this is exactly where our world is heading already, but with the subscription economy, which we talked about in the previous section. You will work to earn money, but that money uh, will go to pay for all your subscriptions, which will now include your home and your car and all your goods and services and anything else you need. The idea of personal property is gone. On one hand, that doesn't sound so bad. I still kind of wish we were renting. We could be in a similar house paying the same amount of money, but we wouldn't have to pay for any repairs, some appliances, some utilities. I mean, when you factor in all that, we'll be paying off this house for 30 years, which for many people who are finally ready to buy a home would make them elderly by the time they finish. It doesn't seem like the greatest deal. In fact, there is a huge push in Gen Z for them to stop aspiring to buy homes at all. Mm just to rent forever. Uh, see, some of this is getting closer to the world of Star Trek, where money is pretty much abolished, but others see it as us inching our way towards communism or socialism in its maybe truest form. What do you think about all this, Mo? Uh, I think that Hillary makes a very good point in our chat over here, and she says renting means that somebody owns it. That's true. So, <laughs> is our generation going to be like the last generation of owners, ownership? Those of us who have purchased our homes, who do own our homes, and I mean, we'll never be able to sell it again or never be able to sell it because the next generation only wants to rent. They don't want to purchase. And so, yeah, you'll sell it to the government, <laughs> like Oriel's saying here in chat. Government alone at all. <laughs> well, uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I there, like everything that we seem to talk about on this show, because this is just the route that you take us down every single week. Um, there are two sides, and I can see the benefit, but it also absolutely one hundred percent terrifies me. Yeah. I mean, it'll. I'm trying to think of like how we got here now. Like we talked about how video games changed so slowly, and how more and more things are becoming subscriptions. And it happened so slowly over time that we didn't really notice it happening. And at most, I feel like it feels like a slight inconvenience sometimes. And other times, like, yeah, this is great. I think it'll still continue to happen slow enough that maybe there will be things where, like, yeah, this is great. Okay, here's the thing. You don't live in my house <laughs> with my husband and my oldest child. Because let me tell you, there have been so many ridiculous 
arguments over games specifically where Topher has had to come in and he's like, hey, can I buy this for this game? And Chris is like, what do you mean? Can you buy this for this game? Don't you own the game already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I need to get this this character, or this level, blah, blah, blah. And Chris is like, it didn't come with the game? No, you're not buying it. But dad, you don't understand. I've got to be able to have this character in order to get to this level. And it... <laughs> Chris is only 36. <laughs> But I feel like this whole shift has aged him because while it happened little by little, it happened very drastically. Yeah. You know, especially when you were a gamer as a kid, but then you got married and you had kids and you kind of went into adulthood, you stepped away from gaming for a little bit in those early years of parenthood when you really don't have time anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And now that your kid is a gamer, you don't really know the lingo and how it works and like you used to. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same gaming world that you grew up in, Yeah. right? So I feel like a lot of times my son is dealing with essentially an 80 year old <laughs> Because he just doesn't understand. Look, Grandpa, I can't win if I don't have this character. Right? You don't understand. It's new. It's but new at the character. same time, on Chris's side, like, this, it's dumb. It's the dumbest thing. <laughs> just like you said, if you purchase the game mm -hmm. and you have to purchase characters un to unlock them that are clearly already there in the game... <laughs> Why don't you already have them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I do not get it. Oh, man. I do not get it, Sam. I am. <laughs> Working as media director at my church, uh, I also tend to be the guy doing all the computer updating. And I remember several years ago now when many pieces of software went from being you purchase this version and you use it as long as you want until you're ready for an upgrade to you pay a monthly subscription fee forever and we'll keep upgrading the software as we go. Right. And there are pluses and minuses with that. I mean, take Microsoft Office. If you're buying that outright, it's costing us a one-time payment. That, while kind of high, will likely serve us for five or more years before we feel the need to upgrade to the latest version, where you now have to subscribe to it, and you'll get a slight upgrade here and there, most of which you won't even notice, and you're paying every six months or every year for the privilege. In the long run, we're paying way more than we would. As a church, you seem like you have a... Oh, Microsoft <laughs> is like... <laughs> That's the Enemy. one like thing that I really despise. <laughs> I've really started using Google's free uh -huh. stuff <laughs> yeah. a lot more But lately. all of my writings from when we had our little blog... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were all done through Microsoft Word, and that's because I was a student at the time, and so I had Microsoft Office for free through the college. Well, guess what? I'm no longer a student, <laughs> and I'm not paying $70 so that I can just get my writings. That's all that I want. My writings. I can't even access them anymore. Hostage. They are. <laughs> It's insane. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see here. The same thing happened with our projector program. Uh, you know, what throws up our music and, you know, sermon slides and all that. Does it really update enough for us to need to have to keep paying for it yearly? I don't think so. Meanwhile, I bought my video editing, soft editing software as a one-time purchase, and they still update and upgrade me every month or so for free. I was even upgraded to the newest numbered release of the software for free. It went from 10 to 11 because I already bought the service. I like that a lot better because it's rewarding a loyal customer mm -hmm. who is more likely to now purchase that for future computers. Exactly. And recommend it to other people. Word of mouth. <laughs> it's a powerful tool. Yeah. So <sighs> there are pros and cons for sure. Some things that constantly... Uh, that constant need for upgrade is well worth the subscription. But also some things, uh, since you don't own those things, they can take it away from you, like someone mentioned earlier. Um, there have been many programs where we had subscriptions 
And then that program kind of went belly up and just ended the program. Now, had I purchased that program outright, I'd still be able to use it for as long as I had the computer. Mm-hmm. At least as is. It wouldn't be getting updates, but I could use it. But with a subscription, they can just take it back from you. Yep. Apply those pros and cons to everything in your life, and you can quickly see how this would get wonky quickly. Just like with the BMW or Tesla situation where they would have the ability to essentially brick your car, even though you bought it outright simply because of subscription issues, that's a weird feeling. Yeah. It reminds me of that Amazon show, Upload. Did you watch that? Yeah. yeah we talked about it, haven't mm-hmm. we? Where even in a virtual afterlife, you have to pay for subscriptions. You have to pay extra for most virtual food. You have to upgrade things that are just lines of code and cost nothing extra, but it makes the company more money. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think in 10 years' time, we're going to be subscribing to a lot more things than we ever imagined. I don't think we'll be full on what the 2030 prediction is, but I think we're going to be really close. We're going to own less than ever before, and we're not really going to be all that happy about it. (laughs) <laughs> but perhaps the generation growing up now, Generation Alpha, might be. I don't know. Because that's going to be all they know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So what's the lesson here? We don't have one. Enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy what you this have while you have it. <laughs> Enjoy anything you own. And go check your bank account to see what subscriptions you've forgotten about but are still paying for. For real. There's almost... A 100% guarantee you're paying for something right now that you didn't realize you're still paying for. Absolutely. Go look it up. Yeah.